Hello pilots, in this one we're going to take a look at some of the advanced features available in the F-18's fuel management system and the way that we can use this to get the absolute maximum range out of the aircraft possible. I'm going to set up a hypothetical situation for a mission that is very, very long. Don't worry, we're not going to fly it. We're just going to look at how we might manage the fuel for a mission that was like this. If that sounds like something that might be of interest to you, come aboard, strap in as you join me in the pre-takeoff checks. And what we're going to do is take a look at the fuel here. So on the left hand side, let's have a look at the fuel page. And on the right hand side, let's come over to the F-Pass page, which is a sort of fuel prediction computer. On a very, very long range mission, we'd want first off a real high bingo. So what I'm going to do is set a bingo to something like 7,000 pounds. It's a super long range. And on the left hand side here, we're going to take a look and we see in total, we've got 17.5 thousand pounds in the F-18, of which about 10,700 pounds currently resides inside the aircraft itself. We've got all these uh, fuel tanks that are within the main body of the aircraft itself as well as a little bit in the left and right wings. In addition to that, we've got the three external tanks. One little trick that some people maybe don't know is that we've got these switches behind the throttles here that control the external fuel tanks in the F-18. We've got one switch for the wing, left and right, and we've got the other switch for the centerline tank. By default, both of these are in the norm position. And with the switches in this normal position, what happens the aircraft uses its own internal fuel inside the aircraft while it's on the ground, whether you're stationary or taxiing. And after takeoff, it begins to draw fuel from the three external tanks, or however many there are, to replenish the internal tanks. We're going to change that by, first of all, turning the wing fuel tank position to the stop position or down and predictably the Hornet will now only use its own centerline tank to replenish the internal fuel tanks once the aircraft takes off. If we now select the center tank and move it forward into the override position we get a master caution and now we see it does actually draw fuel from that center tank even though we're still on the ground. You see it's going to drain that center tank until the internal tanks of the F-18 are as full as they can go, which is just over 11,000 pounds. And there we go. If we leave that switch forward now, it will continue to replenish the internal via that centerline fuel tank. In an emergency, there's some critical scramble situation. It's an all hands on deck type thing going on. What you can do is land, strap three bags on and put both sides into the override mode it's much quicker to completely rearm your aircraft than it is to refuel your aircraft and rearm so a small little tip there for an all hands on deck emergency and as soon as you take off and you see the bags are empty jettison them off so lining up with the runway you're going to continue to get these caution messages which is only because of these uh, fuel tank switches not being in their default position what you could maybe do is set the center line into the norm position before takeoff, but keep the wing tanks in the uh, off position. Next thing, if we have a look here at the fuel endurance page, the F pass. All right. So again, we come into the uh, support page and F pass. We see this screen is effectively broken down into four areas. I'll highlight on that on the screen. Now, below the line is the most efficient height that we could fly. In this case, 33,100 feet. Above the line is our current height, whatever that happens to be. In this case, we're on the ground, so it doesn't apply. But if we were flying at 100 feet AGL, the information would apply to that height. If we were flying at 10,000 feet, the information would apply to that height and so on. On the left side is the range. So this is what we're interested in if we're doing a very long range flight. We want to know what's the best range that we can get out of our aircraft and it's going to give us the best speed to fly at and below the line the best height as well. On the right hand side is an endurance page. If we are to fly to a Pacific waypoint and wait for something to happen, we would want to be flying what's best for the endurance. You can see there's a big discrepancy between the two. To fly as far as we can, it's Mach 0.83 at 33,000 feet. To hang around for as long as possible using the least amount of fuel 
it's 25,000 at Mach 0.63. And we can see there that would give us an endurance of 2 hours 38 minutes until we're down to 2,000 pounds. Whereas the optimum range, it looks we're like we'll be able to fly 1,260 miles. Had a nice comment from Steve say, I probably like drinking Yorkshire tea. Well, Steve, yeah, it certainly is my favourite. And I said I'd tell you a little story. Here it is. I went to visit my grandparents as a kid, as I often did, and they really liked drinking Yorkshire tea as well. And I'd brought them a load of tea over. They were having some work done on the roof by some builders, and these builders were given this drink. To everybody's surprise, the builders recognised it as Yorkshire tea. And so, yeah, it's a worldwide famous drink. So, yeah, let's jump back into the Hornet, which is climbing away from the airfield as we speak. We continue to climb out with the afterburners on. I'm going to engage the autopilot, perhaps give a pitch hold here of around 15, 10, 15 degrees. And with the speed above 350 to around the 400 knot mark, I'm going to come out of the burners, just go mill power. And if we come onto the right screen here, we can press the climb button here. And what we're going to get there, just above our actual speed. Our actual speed is shown up here in the box and the recommended speed is the smaller figure just above. We see it's currently 466, 465 knots. So we're going to level off the climb until we attain that speed. At that point, we're going to continue to climb to this optimum range, which by the time we get there, the fuel I'm going to suggest, it's going to be about 34,000 feet. So as we approach the speed there, they're almost married up and we're going to use the uh, attitude hold to make this a little easier. Again, if your speed is a little higher than the recommended, just pull back a little steeper. They don't need to be exact, just relatively close. We see there are a couple of knots off there and we're happily climbing out onto a heading of 320. We see here we've still got this message with the external transfer switches. Just ignore that. We see the centerline tank is now happily draining away with the left and right still full. And that's because the centerline tank is in the normal position and the wing tanks are still in the stop as we'd previously set. Once this uh, fuel begins to uh, empty out, we're going to get ready to jettison the centerline tank. So we're going to turn the master arm on, select the center station there for the uh, centerline tank move the select, select jettison switch over to the three o'clock position. And once we see that centerline tank reach zero, and very soon after that, we want to press the uh, jettison button. Let's have another look up here. Looks like that our speed and the speed that we should be at are still quite close together. Happily climbing through 18,000 feet. Centerline tank is now at zero. So what we're going to do, press that switch with, again, master arm centerline tank and this on the right hand position. And with the centerline tank gone, it's now time to start draining from the left and right. But just to prove a point, let's just say that we were busy with something else. Perhaps we're dealing with AWACS or some other situation and we don't immediately have time to deal with this. We know it's going to, the aircraft's going to carry on drawing fuel from the internal stores. We can see there the internal fuel is ticking down as this takes place. Let's just to put the burners on just for now. We clearly wouldn't be doing this if we were to try and fly as efficiently as possible. But just to try and increase the fuel flow a little bit to prove the point, external fuel tanks sustain as they are, the internal fuel tanks drained. Now let's say we have time to deal with what we were doing. Let's move the wing tank from the stop into the norm. And we see once again the external tanks draining fuel very quickly as it replenishes the internal stores. You see there the internal fuel is increasing to make up for that delay there. Get rid of the burners back to the uh, normal mill climb. We see here we're actually a bit faster than we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be around 350 knots. Again, this is for the optimum climb. And you don't want to be in burners. You just want to be in mill power for that optimum climb. Currently saying that the optimum range is 34,000, uh, basically 500 feet. So we're about 5,000 feet away from that optimum position. Welcome back. You are joining me at 34,000 feet. You see the optimum position there is 34.6. So let's let go of the autopilot for a little bit and level off. See, we're ever so slightly too high. If it's just a couple of hundred feet, as in this case, don't worry about it. Come over to the autopilot page here, get the barometric hold in, get the heading select or your uh, 
waypoint select depending on how you are flying there. In this case, I'm just going to be using the heading. And now what's important is to use the auto throttle to try and get this speed. So you see, we've got the optimum range. We've got that bit checked. See, it's wanting us to fly at Mach 0.83. If we take a look, we're currently at 0.85. So let's ease the throttles off a little bit. Let the speed drop down. Once we see that M.083, there we go. Engage the auto throttle or CATC there. And the auto throttles will now keep us on that Mach 0.83 speed. We can forget about this climb page. Let's get rid of that. Declutter the heads up somewhat. And now we're going to fly along. This is the most optimum way to fly. See, we're still using the external fuel tanks. We basically got up to cruise with little more than the center fuel. At this point, it's just a matter of waiting until these external fuel tanks burn down. At that point, we would enable these and jettison those tanks. But we're going to wait until uh, those trickle a little closer. Unless, of course, we get bounced, in which case we would be jettisoning those stores right away. Meanwhile, on the right here, the next thing to keep an eye out is this optimum height. You can see every second or so, that's increasing by a foot or so. That's because... As we are flying along and burning fuel, continuously burning fuel, the aircraft is getting lighter and lighter every second. And with that, the optimum height that we can fly at is increasing because the lighter we are, the higher the optimum flight is because the air is thinner. An obvious conclusion, but we cannot fly that high when we're heavy. And so that's why this trickles down. The further you continue to fly, do remember to include the best height to fly at as part of your cockpit scan. Doesn't need to be a continuous thing, just every three or four minutes take a look. And if you see that height is more than two or three hundred feet away from the height that you are at, disconnect the autopilot, climb it, two or three degree climb until you reacquire that new height, re-engage the autopilot. Goes without saying, if you are expecting to hook up with a tanker before then proceeding onto a very deep strike mission, keep your fuel tanks attached to your aircraft even though that they are empty. Hook up with the tanker, refill the aircraft and the fuel tanks as full as they will go, and then carry on with the procedure as we discussed before, centerline tank and then the external wing tanks. And as we begin reaching the end of our cruise here, I do hope you found this one useful or enjoyable. If you did, consider leaving a like. And until next time, wherever in the world you may be, good morning, good afternoon, good evening and good night.